He just can't believe it. Hello, I'm Don Chevrier. Today we'll watch the finest snooker players in the world in action the recent world championships for professionals held in Sheffield, England. And one of the finalists, a Canadian, our national champion, Cliff Thorburn from Toronto. Cliff, uh, welcome. And uh, the first question I have for you concerns what appears to me to be an awful lot of tension and pressure when you're playing for money, much like a pro golfer, I guess, putting for dough in a, in a major tournament. Well, there's certainly uh, a lot of pressure in uh, snooker. I think uh, snooker is a bit different in a way that um, um, the players, uh, you can see that they're not really warmed up, you know, and uh, so uh, the um, spectators naturally uh, think, you know, that the, that the game has got 20 times as much pressure as any other sport. I mean, I would rather be playing uh, than, than um, watching like a snooker match. What about when you are watching, when your opponent's got a big run? The two of you pass, hardly exchange a word. You're aware of each other, but only aware that your opponent's. What happens then when he's hot and you're forced to the sidelines? Well, uh, I used to uh, worry a lot, you know, uh, when I wasn't um, shooting. Uh, but I found, uh, you know, that in the four or five years I've been playing in the World Championships that um, all that you can do is just sit back and uh, even enjoy watching your uh, like opponent play, you know. I mean, uh, just uh, even follow the cue ball. You know, the World Championships, as we'll see, will illustrate how snooker has been elevated to a very high plane, certainly compared to its former image. Men and the competitors wear suits. I think most of the spectators are required to wear ties as well at the World Championship. There's a whole new image and aura about snooker now that really didn't exist before. That's right. The, um, the billiard rooms uh, in Canada, the ones that aren't well run, you know, the uh, ones that don't look too good either, uh, they're not surviving at all and uh, there might be less billiard rooms <coughs> in the country <coughs> excuse me but there are more good ones how did you then very briefly qualify for the world championship and then reach the final well uh, I belong to the World Professional Snooker Players Association which uh, enables me to uh, participate in the championship and um, I won four matches this year uh, to get to the final and, uh, of course, the top prize, I believe, is worth roughly, what, $11,000? Uh, $11,000, right. About 6,000 pounds. That's right. So big money at stake, and uh, much like professional golf, uh, it's up to the shooter. If he's a hot day, and the days can be very long, he'll win some money. By that I mean, as Cliff will agree, you have to play 25 games that are won by yourself before a match that they're called frames has been decided. We'll show it to you, the World Championship from Sheffield, England, coming up. But first, let's pause for just a moment. I'm going to watch that World Snooker final now. John Spencer of England and Cliff Thorburn of Toronto, the Canadian champion. Cliff, uh, John got the luck of the draw heading into that final, didn't he? Well, um, it was, I would imagine, uh, just like a little bit of an edge. Uh, but what happened was that um, when we were playing off to see who would get to the final, uh, after John finished uh, his semifinal match, he had one day off, whereas I had to play the nine days and then play the three more straight so through, right. So 12 days of snooker to get to that world championship and through it. Let's join it now, the match. The commentators, Ted Lowe and Eddie Charlton of the BBC. On his way to this year's final, he's beaten John Virgo, 13 frames to nine, and Ray Reardon, previous holder of the title, 13 frames to six, and myself, 18 frames to 16. His opponent, Cliff Thorburn, the Canadian champion, has already defeated... Rex Williams, 13 frames to 6. Eddie Charlton, the Australian snooker champion, 13 frames to 12. And Dennis Taylor, 18 frames to 16. John's attempting a plant shot here, which is a risky one to play at this time. And, and he's missed it. He's missed it and he's split the reds, Eddie. That, that was an extremely risky shot to play, Ted, over that distance. 
distance of white ball from red balls and he could well pay the penalty for that extremely loose shot. And so the red and black is the first cost hey. to John Spencer for the extraordinary shot he played. Right. I don't feel John was entitled to risk that shot, actually, Ted, because he was, it was very problematical as to whether he was going to get on a colour or not. Would there be any psychology in it, Eddie, in as much that uh, I only want uh, three frames for the title, and if I sort of show off a little, it'll just put the opponent Thanks, off a little more psychological. In well, that's words. in it as well, and of course, John uh, could have had it in mind that he, even if he does open the Reds up, uh, Cliff's got to get them, and uh, with the pressure on Cliff, if Cliff fails with this opening, then John will certainly get them. True enough. Fairly risky business at this stage. Third black coming up. That's not so clever. 24. He attempted to lay on the, the red or the pink to hold for the either of those two reds together into the corner pocket, but of course he's missed playing the cannon and now left himself slightly stranded. He's in a position, Ted, I feel that Cliff's got to try and keep this break going by making one of these reds, being two frames down with only seven to play. It's he needs to get back on the attack. He certainly requires to be at the table as long as possible, doesn't he? Yes, well, I personally think that snooker is the most difficult, demanding and exacting ball game played. I've played most of the various sports and uh, I think it's by far the most exacting ball game played and Cliff has got to make these pots to get things rolling again. Well, he's attempted a safety shot. He wouldn't risk it. Remains to be seen whether his decision was right or not. And so uh, Thorburn takes a 20-point lead, 37-17, but trailing by two frames, the magic figure on the frames, of course, being 25. The first player to have 25 against his name takes that trophy, set on the velvet at the end of the table, the world title, all that goes with it, and the sum of £6,000. This very shot that John Spencer is looking at is his favourite shot, but with all the pressure on at this stage of the final, it will be a great shot to pull this pot off. Now, pressure's too great, and a safety stroke. Cliff Fulborn, 37. <coughs> John Spencer, 78. 
the cue ball not too far from the top cushion and therefore making it difficult to cue, particularly when playing across the nap of the cloth for an acute angle into the center pocket. And Thorburn taking no chances, uses the cushion rail there to guide the cue through his bridge hand and a safety stroke. well played he's put the pressure on John here I feel John's got to take this pot on because he can't afford to leave the red there The way the balls are positioned at this stage, John Spencer simply can't afford to make another mistake. But it's so difficult to get them safe. <coughs> I feel that he will attempt to pot this ball and it will have to be an extremely good shot. Overcut it. He very nearly got two there, but one. successful with one, but the colours not so clever. It was a bold shot, Ted, from that situation to, to go into those balls having attempted the pot, but he pulled it off and full marks for that. I think he's attempting to cut this black back. No, I'm sorry. Well, a terrific shot. Well, I didn't even think it was on. It's remarkable, Ted, when you're at the table, the different angle that the player sees. There's not much in it, but it's always there. Yes. Now he's gone down uh, and has a choice here. The green would enable the cue ball to get back up the table. The blue across uh, a cut into the center would mean taking the cue ball down onto that bulk cushion and back up again. But I think it's the green, in fact, chosen by Thorburn. himself a straight red. He's ignoring that because I'm sure Eddie Chatton would tell you there is no colour. Certainly a great shot at this stage. 
So, very steadily, Thorburn is creeping up the scoreboard. 49 points to 17. Lovely shot. Speaks for itself, Eddie. Perfect position. He's thinking well, Ted. That's a good sign. I mean, he's had one hell of a week this week, but he looks very cool and calm and, and thinking well. of the two balls, the black. leading 66 29. points to Spencer's 17 and gone a trifle too far unhappy about that one he played for the blue he's gone a little too far but the position is quite all right Sixty-six, seventeen, a lead of forty-nine points. Still thirty-five on the table. Spencer here requiring a couple of snookers. Thorburn still willing to do battle and retrieving another frame. I think he flips a snooker there.
That's a good shot. Is this going to the top pocket? Now it's catching the cushion and remains right over the hole. Very important, Ted, that you have these balls running for you at times. If they decide to be cruel to you, they can get you into all sorts of trouble. And we're seeing a case here now where Cliff's getting a run of the balls that was, wasn't there this afternoon. I think you'd be the first to agree, Eddie, that uh, in fact the luck shares itself out over a match such as this. And the fortunes change from time to time, what? as in fact we've Let's seen go, in this final. Yes, I think in most matches the, the luck that the players have is, it equals out. That's John Spencer's way of conceding the frame. John Spencer. John Spencer conceded uh, the frame. He fouled seven points there, deliberately, of course, to take uh, the pressure off the game and the frame going to the Canadian Thorburn at 74 frames to 74 points to 17 but the frame is now only one in it. So Cliff, an encouraging win for you right there and a very decisive one. You got that run but you told me uh, while we watched that that uh, you weren't happy about your mental outlook when you played the latter part of that game. No, I was uh, too pleased in just winning the game, you know, like I put too much emphasis on just, you know, like I had to win. And uh, what happened, uh, I could see uh, that on the shot that I had on the last uh, uh, red with the rest, and I didn't get position on the blue, you know, I should have just made sure that I got on the blue right, and ran all the balls off, you know, but I, like it seemed like I just didn't care at the time and that I just had to win the game which uh, consequently uh, started to make me um, think, well, you know, I don't want to leave him a shot, and then it just went from worse to worse. Well, that can happen, of course, when you play as continuously as you do. Remember, the first man to win 25 games wins the world championship. We'll get back to our match in just a moment. Former world champion John Spencer breaks off for the 46th frame of the 49 frame final requiring just one frame for victory against coming to the table Canadian Cliff Thorburn. Thorburn still requiring four frames for victory the magic figure being 25 frames. Thorburn having put up a terrific battle has steadily lost out in the last few frames with what would appear to be bad shots. They are not bad shots. It is a question of stamina. It is a question of wits. It is a question of a question of fatigue for he's been at the table now for some six days having in fact won the second semi-final against Dennis Taylor and continued straight on in this final against the former champion Spencer. Well, he's got it all to do, Ted, but I'm afraid he's not going to give up without a fight. Oh. That was a reasonably bold shot. From out of the jaws of the corner pocket. And he's round onto the black. Oh.
almost undisturbed. The pyramid of reds there, with just the few taken away that had been potted by Thorburn. Twelve points to nil, but Spencer leading 24 frames to 21. And <laughs> well, well, he just can't believe it. Thorburn sitting there wondering how he went in off the pyramid. But at the table, it's Spencer. Six. And he's up for the black. Seven. Costly mistake, I'm sure, from Cliff Thorburn there. Each ball now, Eddie, that Spencer potted, but I feel has £6,000 written on it. It's right in front of him. The fringe benefits that go with the world title, the trophy, and the title to him for the third time. On to the black. Yes, he's got a marvellous opportunity here to, to clean up. Eddie, you've been in this situation yourself, I know. I saw you in Australia win the World Match Play Championship. What runs through your thoughts when you're in this winning streak, knowing that just one frame is going to give you the title? Well, in a situation like this, Ted, I'm quite sure not to make a mistake and miss anything. I mean, the balls are here to be taken. John realises that. But at the same time, he'll be extremely careful not to miss one because it's marvellous how your opponent can bounce back at this game. 38. John requires another 20 to 25 points at least to ensure a safe margin in this, what appears to be the final frame, but he's yet to get them.
finally choosing the green. And he's hit the blue. 50. The half century. Six reds left. delicate pink now into the center. And he's not attempting the pink at all. Spencer, satisfied with his 51 break, has a lead now, 55 points to 12, and plays Cliff Thorburn here, very safe indeed, the cue ball just an inch away from the bolt cushion. He's asked no quarter, he is giving no quarter. Spencer just requires the title, and of course the money that goes with it. In no disgrace at all is Canada's Cliff Thorburn, who, for the first time, has found himself in the final of the World Snooker Championship. Again, uh, John Spencer has Cliff Thorburn in real trouble. He's tucked up on the balk cushion. There are only five reds left. And he's a long way behind. I don't think there's any chance of getting on the attack here, but Ted, all he can do is play a safety shot and wait for one final opportunity. The atmosphere, of course, is electric. The Crucible Theatre in Sheffield packed to suffocation for these final frames of the 1977 Embassy World Professional Snooker Championship. At the table there, in trouble, Cliff Thorburn. Gallant try. Cliff went all out for that pot. He went on the attack there, but unfortunately didn't make the pot. And with the white ball catching the pink, he could have left John Spencer in a much easier position as well, but John has to make some sort of a good shot here to score. John making sure that cue ball is down. You're watching the finest snooker players in the world competing for top prize in the world's professional championships from Sheffield, England. Our match featuring Canada's Cliff Thorburn and England's John Spencer returns after this brief pause. The red, very near to the black. There are, in fact, five reds there, which means with a black with each red, a possible 67 points.
Oh, a very fine one indeed. Well, that was even finer. some very clever safety play by both players. The advantage with John Spencer. He leading 24 frames to 21, requiring this frame for victory on the world crown and leading in this frame by some 43 points. Cliff has an opportunity here of getting the black ball out, but it's doing it without leaving the red ball on. And that's exactly as you predicted, Eddie. The red is now over the pocket. The pink is over the center pocket. And Cliff Thorburn, uh, well aware of the mistake he has made, sits down and waits. What? but not quite snooped himself on those remaining four reds. So the difference is 50 points. The total points on the table are 59. Four reds, four blacks and all the colors and it appears to be the dying embers of the chances of Cliff Thorburn, who has made such a bit for the world crown of 1977. Job, That's a very good safety stroke. and still enthralled with the possible final frame of the 77 championship is the 76-year-old Grand Master of Snooker, Joe Davis. Another safety one from Spencer.
Well, Cliff had a fly at that one. He's failed to pocket the ball, but I believe he may have been lucky enough to get out. This is not an easy ball. But it's a nice pot. And that will clinch the final. Spencer looking at the scoreboard. Fifty-one points in front. And there are, in fact, fifty-one points on the table. That yellow means that Thorburn now requires one snooker. wasn't fine enough. Thorburn can't pocket a ball here. At the same time, to lay a snooker and prevent your opponent from hitting any one of three reds is also extremely difficult, so he's having plenty of troubles. That will go. not being tempted. <laughs> 24 frames to 21. The magic 25. Surely soon to go up on the scoreboard there above the name of John Spencer. These men are playing for $11,000 Canadian in top prize money and the trophy that represents the World Professional Snooker Championship. Our match between Cliff Thorburn and John Spencer continues in just a moment. looking at the black. <laughs> Terrific amount of check side there on the cue ball. Not an easy one by any matter of means. And Spencer quite content to put another. And in fact, there, Cliff Thorburn, the great sportsman he is, has conceded that at 46 frame. And it is after 46 frames out of the 49 of this World Snooker Championship final that John Spencer takes the world crown for the third time. And now to present the trophies and checks 
It's first to ball the runner-up, Cliff Thorburn, who receives his cheque from Mr. John Goodchap, a senior executive of WD and HO Wills, accompanied by Mr. Peter Dyke, the sponsored events manager, with his cheque for £2,000. And the world champion 1977, John Spencer, receiving from John Goodchap his cheque for £6,000. And now the world trophy, which he gives a little kiss to, having let it alone since 1970. Well, Cliff, a tough result for you. You came so close to the World Championship and missed it by the four games, 25 to 21. It must have been a major disappointment for you. Yeah, well, I was uh, tired right now uh, just looking at that, you know. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, well, I was very, um, you know, um, well, sad or like, displeased with the way that I played at the end. But um, <clears throat> uh, having gotten to the final uh, for the first time, you know, I learned well, an that's awful lot there. Yes. Yeah, and uh, you know, uh, uh, like I took it all in, and uh, I think that I'm going to be uh, a better player uh, next year as well. Of course, it's been played in England time and time again, and uh, what we didn't mention before was there are some differences in terms of the table and the pockets over there. Yeah, uh, the tables here in Canada have got uh, pockets that are three and five eighths wide, and in England they're three and a half inches, uh, which doesn't seem uh, like that much of a difference, but when you combine that with uh, like the way that the pockets are cut, um, like it makes it a much smaller pocket. So if the audience uh, saw the players pass on a few sh uh, shots into the side pocket, well then it's, uh, you know, the uh, shot is much more difficult. The uh, slate in England is three quarters of an inch um, thicker, and the cloth is uh, thicker as well, and the balls are heavier, you see. So if you put all of these things together, um, what happens is that you have to hit the balls harder into a smaller pocket, you know, which uh, does make things a bit more difficult. Right. It's an adjustment, but you handle it very well, reaching that world final, losing 25-21. We'll hear more of Cliff Thorburn next year, I'm sure. Hope you enjoyed the program today. For Cliff Thorburn, this is Don Chevrier. So long for now.